Today I'm here with another Walking Dead video request. I've been getting a lot of messages in my inbox to do this video. And this request is, what if Shane was the leader of the group? So basically, what if he would have lived and he would have killed Rick? Now, I am not about to sugarcoat anything in this video. I am not about to do it. Shane did have his downfall. And I'm going to name every single, I ain't going to name every single one. But I'm definitely going to break this down the best way I can. Because like I just said, Shane was an amazing character. Shane had the best character development in season two. Hands down. No argument. You can't argue about that. Shane made season two. Shane had people who never watched The Walking Dead. Watch it, season two. When Shane bust open that born and he killed those zombies, I mean the way he did it. I know people said said I don't, I, I don't even watch The Walking Dead, but they said once I seen that once I seen that scene when Shane bust open that born and killed them zombies, they was like I was hooked. I just started watching it. Shane made season two. Shane was season two. There's no doubt about that. But like I just said, just because just because he was he was an amazing character does not mean I'm gonna sit right here and praise him. Because he had downfalls to his character, and I'm gonna talk about him. So, first, the first thing people say, well, if Shane was the leader, he would have killed those prisoners in season three as soon as he seen them. Of course Shane would have killed those prisoners. Look at it this way. He killed Randall. The first time he was trying to kill Randall because he thought Randall was a threat. He thought Randall was going to go back to his group and tell them where they were staying at. That's the first time he wanted to kill. Well, that's the first time that he wanted to kill Randall. And, but then his mind perspective changed. He killed Randall. Because he wanted to set Rick up in order to kill Rick. Like I just said, the first time he wanted to kill Randall because he thought Randall was a threat. So, of course he would have killed those prisoners. Shane was a sheriff was a sheriff officer. He used to arrest people. Those prisoners you seen in season three, Oscar, Big Tiny, and them, and Thomas, them was the type of people that Shane arrested before the zombie apocalypse even occurred. So of course he would have killed those people right away. They was in jail for a reason. Like I just said, there was a type of people, there was a type of people he arrested before any of this happened in the Walking Dead universe. They was criminals before anything. So of course he would have killed them. Now, am I agreeing on him killing them? I would have said, yeah, kill Thomas, Andrew, and stuff. But like I say, we found that in season three that Oscar was actually a good character. He was actually a good person, him and him and Axel. So I would have never agreed with him killing them two. Or killing Big Tiny, because Big Tiny seemed like he was a cool guy. Point two. Y'all go around and y'all said that Shane would make the perfect leader. Because he take things into his own hand. He take, he take matters into his own hand. Okay. Shane didn't even want to go back in season one. He did not want to go back to Atlanta City to save Andrea and the rest of the group. You mean to tell me you want a guy as a leader who don't even, well, who wouldn't even go back to rescue you? He would he would have left you dead. And we're talking about season one. Season one is season one is basically still when he still had his humanity still intact. He still cared about the group as a whole. But only to a certain extent. He didn't care about them that much until he wanted to go back and rescue some of the members, some of the members that had left the group. He didn't care about them that much, but he did care about them when they was around him. But like I said, he didn't care about him enough to go back and want to go save him. Because he felt that 
going back to going back to go say them was putting other people's lives at risk that was in the group. And y'all telling me y'all will want this guy as the leader when he will. Let's just say y'all went y'all went to Atlanta to go get some food, supplies, guns, and all type of stuff. Then you call Shane and say, Shane, could you come save me? What Shane going to tell you? Shane going to tell you, no, I'm not coming. We're not putting other people's lives at risk. But you got Rick Grimes, a man. Until this, and, and even until the previous season, this man put his life on the line for the people in his group. This man has a son. He don't have a wife no more. He have a son. He supposed to be there for his son. But this man went to Woodbury to save Maggie and Glenn. He even went back to save Daryl. This man put his life on the on the line many times. But y'all telling me y'all 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 would want Shane as a leader over Rick? Shane would have never went back to go save y'all. He would have left y'all though. In season one, like I said, in season one. He was still, he still had his, he still had his, he still had his humanity intact. And he didn't want to go back and save him in season one. Like I said, he was still a good guy. So, you know, for a fact that season two, his mind perspective changed because his character completely made a completely turn. So, let's be real here. So, next thing somebody, somebody said. If Shane was in the room with the governor, he would have killed them. Here's the problem with that. When Shane do stuff, he usually don't think about it. And, and, and let me uh, talk about this. Sometimes he think about it, but 99% of the time, he don't think about it. Um, he, don't, he don't think about planning out nothing right. He'll never plan out nothing right like, like talking about it. Okay, perfect example. When he was in the CDC lab, he let his temper get the best of him until he until he took a shotgun and he started shooting up the whole lab. Now think about it. If he would have killed Dr. Jenner in that lab, how would well, well how would they be able to get out that lab? Because the only reason they was able to get out that lab was because Dr. Jenner opened up the door. Then is when they got out the lab, and then they made it to the main part of the lab where you can see outside through windows. But the whole time when they was locked up in there with those doors, with those doors uh sealed, and Daryl, and we see Daryl with a with an axe trying to um basically bust open the doors or break down the doors. Shane was Shane got so angry he was shooting the place up with a shotgun. He was he was even about to kill Dr. Jenner until Rick punched them and knocked them down. It made him come back to his senses. He went completely dark. He didn't even know what he was doing at that time. He was just shooting up everything. He was shooting up the panels where he had the, the, the button controls in the lab and everything. So, think about it. If he would have killed Dr. Jenner, ain't no way in the world. They would have ain't no way in the world. They would have never be they would never be able to get out that uh out that main lab laboratory part. It's after Rick had talked to Dr. Jenner. Dr. Jenner decided to uh open the door for them open the door for them so they could get out. So, Shane and the governor. Of course Shane would have killed the governor. If it, of course Shane would have killed the governor when he was in the room with the governor. But like I said, he would have never thought about it. Hell, the governor could have had people surrounding that feed store. Could have been people watching over that feed store, waiting for something to happen, like the governor's uh, men from Woodbury, Martinez, Shumper. Anything could have happened. But that's the first thing somebody said. He would have killed the governor. Yeah, he would have killed the governor, but he would have killed them not thinking about it. And with him doing that, could it end up getting Daryl killed, Herschel killed? Well, those two that came with Rick. Would end up getting him killed because he didn't think about it. So now let's move on to season two. Season two, we see Shane again, and I'm gonna ask y'all, 
Who would y'all rather have as a leader? Somebody like Shane, who used to care about the group as a whole, but then he stopped caring, and he only started caring about two people in the group, which was Lori and Carl. Are you ready to have somebody like Rick Grimes, somebody who cares about the group as a whole, not just his wife and his son? So who would you want as the leader? I would take Rick because Rick cares about the group as a whole. He would have came back and saved you. We've seen this on multiple occasions, what Rick would do. He put his life on the line so many times. Season 2. This how you know you this how you know Shane stopped caring about the group as a whole because Shane was about to leave them in the first episode. Remember when Shane had took that Hyundai Accord and he had rigged it? He said he was about to leave. Because think about it. You got Rick and you got Shane. Both of these men are two alpha dominant males. You can't have two alpha dominant males coexist in the same group. But you got Rick wanting to be the leader, and you got Shane wanting to be the leader. Shane was the leader at first until Rick came back. Well, until Rick came. So, it would have never worked out. Never. You can't have, like I said, you can't have two alpha, alpha dominant males coexist. Oh, so let's talk about next. In season two, Shane becomes what you call pra pragmatic. Pragmatic is basically, he comes up with his own theories. Now, his theories, basically his own theories on how to survive in the zombie apocalypse. That's what he comes up with. Now, for some of you who didn't pay attention to season two, what was Shane's main theory he came up with? I'm about to tell you. In order to survive, you must lose your humanity. Shane chose to lose his humanity. It didn't happen on his own. You got some characters in The Walking Dead who lost their humanity, but it just it just happened. It wasn't planned. Ch Shane chose to lose his humanity in order to survive. That's what he did. He just... It just didn't happen overnight. He didn't do it on purpose. It's just, it, he chose to. And you can see this when he's when he cutting his hair in the mirror. You can see this transformation he was going through. Although he did cut his hair because he had a cut in his head too. But you can see once he had sacrificed Otis in order to survive, that, that right there brought on that transformation. And he realized what he did. And he realized what he did was able, well, 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 what he did allowed him to live. So he chose to lose, he chose to lose, lose his humanity. So now let's talk about Shane trying to kill Rick in that field. I'm going to tell you right now, that plan would have never worked. Yeah, he would have killed Shane, he would have killed Rick, but would nobody, would, would nobody believe him when he would have went back and told Lori them about this. The only person, because like I say, Daryl is not stupid. Lori and, and Herschel is not stupid. They know what was going on. I'm pretty sure those two would have figured it out. Because like I say, Daryl found out about him killing Randall. Okay. He have Rick in the field. And he tells Rick, I'm going to go back. And I'm now, now this is when he point the gun at him. He says, I'm going to go back and I'm going to tell them that the prisoner that escaped shot you dead and I chased him down and then I snapped his neck. All right. Okay. Shane's favorite gun is a Glock 17. Now, he said that Randall hit him in the face and took his gun. His Glock 17. Let's just say if Randall would have did this. If Randall would have did this. I'm saying if because he didn't because he got killed by Shane. You mean to tell me Randall would shoot Rick dead but he wouldn't shoot you? Who in a right mind who got a what, well, what type of man 
in a right mind would have a Glock 17 and let another man chase them down in the zombie apocalypse and not shoot them. I mean, you're not going to get in trouble. It's a zombie apocalypse. The law doesn't exist anymore. There's no police. Then on top of that, Randall is scary. We know Randall is scared. And what's the old saying? When you bag a scary person down in the corner, ain't no telling what they'll do to you. To me, they're the most dangerous ones. Then on top of that, Shane tried to kill Randall at the school bus zone. He literally tried to shoot him and Rick save Randall. So why would Randall appear at uh, well appear to them to why would he shoot Rick? But then he wouldn't shoot Shane. Why would he run from Shane after he shoot Rick? I mean, he would still have ammunition in that Glock 17. Now I can see if Shane said, "Well, uh, Randall shot Rick, and then I shot Randall." Like I say, who in a right mind is going to run from another man they're scared of with a gun in their hand? And I can see in the real world that that's different. You may have police around and stuff, but you live in the zombie apocalypse. Like I say, Randall was scared. Randall was scared of Shane. I know in the world, Randall would, Randall would have let Shane chase him down after he just killed Rick. It, it wouldn't make no sense. As soon as he would have went back and told him that, first thing Daryl would because you already know Daryl speak his mind, Daryl would have said, okay, why would Randall shoot you? Why would Randall shoot Rick but not shoot you? Why would Randall take off running from you while he still have a gun and ammunition in it? It don't make no sense. You mean to tell me you let this, you let this, you, well, you mean to tell me he let you chase him down and jump on his back and snap his neck while he got a gun in his hand, but he shot Rick dead. But he should shoot you. He let you run behind him. No. Herschel would have said something about it. And I'm pretty sure Glenn would have said everybody would have figured out he was lying. So, point two. The moment he raised that gun up at Rick, let's just say he would have shot Rick that, that same moment he raised that gun up at him. What he didn't realize was, first off, Anytime a gunshot is fired at Herschel's boy, the sound radius, the sound radius travels. I mean, it travels really far. I mean, that's how zombies is able to hear from long, distance, long distances. Because the sound radius travels at Herschel's boy. And, it, and this right here is only Herschel's boy. Anytime, some, anytime a sound is made or a noise is made at Herschel's boy, it travels farther than it usually would any any place else, because Herschel around Herschel Bond is so quiet. There is no human life around it. There is nothing to there is nothing to uh dilute the noise or break or, or break down some of the noise that's around it. Because like I say, it's an empty area. There is no activity going on, so the so the sound is going to travel. So. As soon as he would have shot Rick, Daryl and Glenn would have heard that. They wasn't that far from each other. Then on top of that, the same the, around the same time he had that gun pointed at Rick was the same time that 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 Daryl and Glenn found uh Randall as a zombie and killed him. And then on top of that, Daryl found he, he found two foot well, he found two uh foot trails. In the dirt, and he found Randall's, and he found Shane's. That was with that was with Randall's uh foot well footsteps in the dirt, and he also found the blindfold the blindfold that uh that that Rick had put over Randall's eyes. Then he also found the blood on the tree where Shane had rubbed his nose on it, and I, I'm assuming that he broke it or at least busted. He found all of that. That lie would have never worked. He would have killed Shane. I mean, Shane would have killed Rick, but would nobody would would nobody believe what he said once he would have went back and told him that? Ain't nobody. Now, for the final part, let's talk about the final part. Shane made it obvious in this se uh, within within season two. If you was on to me, I would have. 
well, he said he made it clear that if you was on to him, he would have killed you, or let or, or let some or let something else happen to you, so he was well, well, so he wouldn't have to get his hands dirty. Perfect example. Remember when Shane, when, when Dale confronted Shane in season two, and I will never forget this. He told Shane about about what he did in season one, episode five, titled Wildfire. Remember when Shane pointed that shotgun at Rick in the woods, and then Shane turned around. He seen Dale around him, and Dale says, "Jesus," because he, he seen a he seen him pointing that gun at Rick, and Dale finally confronts him about it. He tells Shane about what he did. And Shane looks at Dale. We all we all know that Shane didn't like Dale because Dale was always on him. Shane looks at Dale. He tells Dale, "You think I'll shoot Rick? That's my best friend. I love that man. I love him like he's my own brother. Do you think that's the kind of person I am? Well, maybe you ought to just think that through. Say I am." That kind of person who the gun down his own best friend. Think what I do to a guy that I don't even like. When he starts throwing accusations my way. And then he tells them what you think. Oh shoot, he made it clear right there. He would have, anybody that was on him, he would have killed them. Then on top of that, as I just mentioned about him not getting his hands dirty, he would have let somebody else. He he would have let somebody else either either eat, or either kill him. Do you think when Dale died, Shane really cared? Shane didn't kill when Dale died. First thing, the first thing, the first thing came through Shane's head was at least I don't. At least I didn't have to kill him. Now he's out the way. Second. The man was going to the man was going to leave Rick at that bar to die because remember when Lori in season two when Lori was looking for Rick and she had that car wreck and Shane ends up finding her. She says, "I want to go with Rick at because deep down inside she knew Rick then was in trouble because Rick and them left that left that daytime but they, but, but they were still gone and it was nighttime and she and she, and she knew something wasn't right." And Shane knew this. But Shane stops her from going there. And he basically tells her, he lies to her and tells her, Rick has came back to the farm. The whole time this man was lying because they were still at that bar fighting, were, were fighting Tony and Dave group. Shooting at him. He didn't want to go back to save his own best friend. So do you honestly think he would have went back to Woodbury to save Glenn, Maggie, and Daryl? No way. He would have never went and did it. Did another thing. He didn't even like Daryl like that. Because Daryl was always on to him. And that's how I know he would have he loved Daryl. Um, he would have loved Daryl behind in season three. Because when I was in the woods looking for Randall. And Rick had asked Shane. What, what he asked him. What Randall ran to. Where you think he went. Daryl looks at Shane. And he tells Shane. This is exactly what he says. He says. He weighs a buck twenty-five soaking wet. You trying to tell us you let him get the jump on you? And Shane couldn't say nothing. Cause he, he know Daryl was always on to him. Him and Daryl even got into it because because uh Shane tells Daryl about that he's stupid for, for for well for looking for a girl that's already dead. And Daryl gets heated talking about Sophia. He didn't even want to go look for Sophia. Even from day one, when they well, even from day one, but even from day one, he didn't even want to go look for her. Before he knew anything about her possibly being dead, he didn't want to go look for her. So, yeah, like I say, he didn't like Daryl. And Shane's the type of person, all right, uh, let me lead Daryl in Woodbury and maybe they'll kill him. So, I, I won't have to get my hands dirty. So, that's the type of person he was. Either he'll kill you, or he'll let something happen to you. So, he won't have to get his hands dirty. 
So it was my breakdown of Shane. Like I say, overall good character, best character season two, but he couldn't be my leader. I'm sorry. He couldn't. Hope you guys enjoyed this topic, this conversation, and peace.